Okay. So you're probably asking yourself, why is Survival Lust playing with the new T3 Terminator Proton Pulsar gun, right? Isn't that what it looks like? The T3, it, it, it fires Proton missiles. Is that not the goofiest looking thing you've ever seen. Well, yes, it is goofy. It's extremely heavy. And it costs four times more than the gun itself. So why in the world have I paired a $1,500 night vision scope and I don't even want to use the word scope in this review. The Pulsar Digisight Ultra N455LRF. And the LRF stands for Laser Range Finder. And that's what this is right here. This is your laser range finder. Over here is your IR emitter. This is your infrared illuminator. And on the 455, you have a different illuminator than you do on the 450. And there's pros and cons to what model you want to go with. The 455, under certain conditions, you will not see the infrared light. Whereas on the 450, from what I've read, there's a chance that while that beam might be stronger, there's a chance that it can show up to the naked eye, at least from an animal standpoint. Now, I don't know that to be true. Um, it didn't matter to me. That wasn't a criteria for me going with the 455. I'm going to talk about some of the features and the philosophy of why you would want to go with a night vision device on an SHTF survival rifle because that's what this is. This is a SHTF survival rifle. This is my H&K 416D 22LR in custom camo by yours truly. Doesn't come this color. You have to go out and buy three cans, a rattle can, Krylon, and get you a laundry bag to make it look this cool. And I may end up doing the scope as well. But I figured since I'm going to be using the scope at night, probably not that credulous. But yeah, this thing's a heavy, heavy gun now. I want to say the scope weighs probably three pounds. I'll weigh it. I'll annotate it. Um, so... Uh, we're going to talk about the advantages and the philosophy of why, as we get into the conversation of night vision, thermal vision, being able to see in the dark, right? And I'm going to give you my explanation and my provocation as to why I chose what I chose in my reasonings. Your mileage may vary. I am not trying to purport or to make an argument that you need to do exactly this right here. And if you don't, then uh, you're a kudzu commando and you need to have your man card revoked. That's not what I'm saying. I'm going to share some of the main reasons as to why I chose this setup in the direction that I went. First of all, let's talk about the reason why I did not go with thermal because that seems to be the the latest dance craze thermal scopes are amazing they most definitely are I'm not going to sit here and tell you that if i had the money and the justification and the right environment the right shooting environment that i would not prefer to have thermal maybe 
But in this application, and this is where we're going to drive this gear review video today, we're going to drive this gear review video, video, review video to the the common denominator is in this application for nighttime SHTF event hunting. That that's what this is for. This isn't for shooting bad guys. This isn't for uh, engaging in nighttime warfare. That's not what this is for. This scope, and I hate to use the word scope, though though it is a, it is technically a scope. I mean, it has a zoom capability all the way up to 18 power. Um, I would view it more as a monitor. That's what I feel like when I'm using it. I feel like I'm looking through a monitor, a close circuit camera device. I would say this is more of a camera than a scope. But for the sake of this video and our language, our common language that we're going to use, we'll, we'll use those two terms interchangeably. Camera, digital recording device, scope. Okay? It does not operate under the uh, same optics as a scope. Thus the reason for the infrared illuminator. However, even with the illuminator turned off, and we're going to talk about some of the amazing features of this pulsar, why I went with the pulsar, but back to my argument before we get too far into the pulsar, why I chose not to go with thermal. Two reasons. Two reasons. A, thermal is very expensive. And I could not justify, though this purchase right here is at the end of my shopping list. I mean, this is what you buy when you've bought everything else that you need for SHTF. This isn't the first thing you buy. This is the last thing you buy. You buy food and you buy bullets and you buy more guns before you buy uh, nighttime vision apparatuses, thermal scopes, night vision. And we're not even going to get into nods and PVS 14s and, and, and that whole argument. I'm, I think it's asinine. I do. I would say from my application and from my philosophy of use for me to go out and to spend $10,000 minimum, that's with the helmet and, you know, all of the attachments that you need to get a, a decent set of uh, PSV, uh, PVS 14s. You're going to be somewhere between seven, eight, nine, ten thousand. 10,000. Easy, easy. And that's just a monocular. That's not even the dual tube. White phosphorus, Gen 3. I personally cannot justify spending that much money for my application. I can't. So for those of you that have a philosophy where that you feel like that we're going to be in a situation where we would need to defend ourselves in an SHTF situation where the need would be prevalent for you to go out and buy night vision or thermal that that's that's for you that's that's your choice I'm not going to try to talk you out of that I'm not going to try to talk you into that that's a decision that you'll have to come to all by yourself and I can't help you there so I want to be perfectly clear that my justification for purchasing this particular piece of equipment was not for self-defense. Can it be used for self-defense? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Without a doubt. Up to 300 yards. Without a doubt. I have begun the testing process of this, so at night it's super cold out. And I'm being a little bit of a womp. I am recovering from COVID. Both Mountain Dew and I have had COVID the same week. And uh, so I'm trying to 
take care of my body. I am on the up, upside now. I think I'm just about past it. So I will begin extensive testing, nighttime testing with this Pulsar. But just from the three nights that I've had it out playing with it, I just got the QD mount today from Outdoor Legacy. It did come with a fixed mount that mounts to the 1913 Picatinny rail. But I chose to go with the QD mount and we'll talk about that too. But for self-defense, that's not my primary application. Obviously, right, I've got it on a 22 long rifle. So going back to thermal, number one, it's too costly. In my application, SHTF, it's also too technical. Thermal scopes are very technical. Good ones. The nice ones. You're going to spend five grand for a nice one. The second problem that I have with thermal in my application, and I hate to have to keep qualifying my review, but in my application, the second reason why I chose not to go with thermal is because um, I live in a very cold climate and thermal is very sensitive to temperature ranges. Below freezing, it's prone to failure. And that was probably the driving force behind because it's not like I'm not willing to spend the money. If I got to spend the money on something, I'm going to spend the money on something. I mean, I've got one gun alone, one gun alone that I have over $12,000 in. So it's not a matter of I'm being cheap and I don't think I should go out and buy quality equipment. I do believe in spending money on quality equipment, but I also believe making smart choices is more prudent. That's the reason why I went with the Pulsar. Digisight. Got it on Optics Planet. Good luck finding this scope. If you're watching this video in February of 2022, you're realizing what I'm realizing and what a lot of people that follow these type of uh, products realize is, is that equipment is getting harder and harder to find. Good quality equipment especially Second Amendment equipment. Very hard to find. I was fortunate enough to find this on Optics Planet and they uh, shipped it out to me and I got it in less than four days. I bought quite a bit from Optics Planet and I highly recommend shopping from them. I do not buy expensive electronic devices on Amazon. I've talked about that in various other videos that uh, there's too much of a risk for counterfeits and I don't like um, the return process. So when possible, I try to buy from reputable dealers or the manufacturer directly. Consequently, Pulsar um, is out of this scope, but Optics Planet had it. So either they're at the end of their production or they've stopped producing it, I don't know. I would have a hard time believing that they have stopped production on this because this fits the ideal spectrum for my application. So the reason I did not go with thermal, once again, it's too expensive. I don't need it. I just don't need it. I don't need thermal. Night vision's fine. Do I need a night vision scope that has the ability to record both video in high definition as well as audio? No. Do I need a scope that allows me to have an app that where I can actually see the image from the scope on my phone? Do, do I need that feature? No, I don't. But it has that ability. I like the integration. I like the the UI in it. The interface is very user friendly. It took me literally uh, about three hours of reading 
the owner's manual, the quick start guide, and then I went on Pulsar's website and I downloaded the full version of the English translation because my Dutch and French suck. So I stuck with English and I'm learning a lot. I like the fact that it has multiple reticles. There's a lot of features and a lot of options, a lot of adjustability within the menus. There's a learning curve, just like anything else, any piece of equipment, whether it be digital or electronic piece of equipment, there's always a learning curve. So this video will not be an instructional um, tutorial on how to use the Pulsar Digisite. It's more of a explanation as to why I chose this and for my application. So Mountain Dew and I have been discussing purchasing night vision for close to three years. I've had my finger on the button in the shopping cart I don't know how many times on purchasing not one set but two set of PVS 14s. I can't count how many times I was ready to go ahead and spend an excess of $20,000 on night vision setup. And I kept going back to my philosophy and that is I'm not going to play soldier boy and at the first sign of trouble at night I'm I'm leaving okay is that a cowardice attitude no it's not it's not I'm gonna defend my life but I haven't been called to war I've been called to defend my family and I've been called to defend my life and so my motivation for a firefight is to engage when I have to and leave when I can. So that's not the reason why I need night vision. I need night vision more for hunting application. If you know anything about hunting wildlife, most wildlife moves at night. The reason I chose a 22 is because it has a softer report. This thing is almost a glorified pellet gun. I can literally shoot this from the inside of my front door at 20 yards when those little nasty tree rats come climbing in and eating all of our suet. I can shoot this from literally just opening up the door and, and it doesn't disturb anybody. It's a very quiet shooting gun. The reason I went with the quick detach mount on the Pulsar is once I get this zeroed in, I'm going to use this scope, which is my Vortex Crossfire 2 3x9. And I took the mount off of this scope and I am in the process of upgrading it to this Midwest Industries QD. And I've got ring inserts coming because this is a 30 millimeter and the crossfire is a one inch tube. Very hard to find one inch tube QD scope mounts. Very hard. So I found some inserts and they're on their way. So this rifle will be used primarily for nighttime hunting as well as daytime hunting. So I will zero both of these scopes in and I will keep one in my back pocket. The nice thing about the Pulsar Digisite is that it comes in this very nice carrying case as you see here with a shoulder strap. The display is very nice. It's super clear. Everything is legible. I am left eye dominant, but you do not need to use your dominant eye with a camera. The digital camera is doing all of the magnification. 
not just the optics in your eye. So there's a little bit of a optical illusion going on when you're using a digital scope because you're thinking that you've got to, you know, train your eye like you do with a regular optical scope and that's not the case. This is literally a zoom lens. So you can use your non-dominant eye. In my case, my non-dominant eye fits the scope better, which is my right eye, and I can see perfectly clear. I found at night, and there was not a lot of light pollution out, but I found at night I didn't even need the IR illuminator on. It is a three-powered illuminator. This is a lithium-ion battery pack that it comes with, rechargeable. It also has the ability on this side of the scope to piggyback right here with a USB-C cable and I've got a couple of uh, USB battery packs coming so that I can run supplement power to the scope in the event that the internal and I say internal it does come off battery pack runs dead I didn't want a scope that ran on AA batteries or lithium batteries. I wanted something that could be used as a rechargeable. And I know they do make rechargeable alkaline and lithium batteries. But I wanted the USB lithium ion pack because everything that I am trying to do in my application for SHTF would rely upon running a solar panel. So I would want to keep my two battery packs charged, keep one on charge at all time. So that I don't ever have to have a concern with having enough power. The digital range finder, the, the long range finder, the laser range finder, I have a range finder that I'm pretty familiar with using them. They work well. Normally they work about 50% of the range that they say they work. So if you're buying a a range finder that's rated at 450 yards you're probably going to get 250 225 yards out of it accurately i found this range finder um easily read 350 yards easily with a 22 long rifle i'm not going to be making 350 yard shots I could uh, zoom. It's got a picture-in-picture -picture magnification up to 18 power, as I said. I found that I could zoom in on whatever I needed to up to 200 yards, and I could clearly make out the animal. Clearly. Unlike with some thermal scopes, whereas you lose that detail, the clarity and the detail on this was literally like watching television. It's that clear. There's not going to be any second guessing on not being able to identify your target at night. I know that just from the three times that I've played around with it, that I'm absolutely amazed at the digital imaging quality. Even moving the rifle around side to side, I did not lose focus. I did not lose clarity. It does have a focus dial on this as well as a diopter setting so you've got a little bit of flexibility here but it's very sharp i was able to focus it in and like i said i don't need the record capability but it'll be fun to play with now so i may be making some videos with this at night obviously not hunting with it at night because i don't hog hunt or coyote hunt, I would be using this for capturing game to eat. So this is this is an investment on our family's part to ensure and to give us another advantage, a leg up in a nighttime application so that I can procure meat. This is a protein getter. You gotta think about that, don't you? Fishing, trapping, hunting, all those things there are competitive options out there that go for about half the price as the Pulsar Digisite. I looked at them. 
I was not satisfied with their features or their quality. Do they work? Yes, they do. I don't want to throw any of the other manufacturers under the bus. But once again, for me, I had the money. That helped a lot. Okay, guys, it does help a lot when you have the money, when you're buying something, that you're not overextending yourself. I did that when I was in my 20s. I don't do that in my 50s anymore. So I don't, um, I don't spend more than I make. I spend what I can afford. And I spend what makes sense. There are a lot of nighttime digital night vision scopes out on the market. Rifle scopes like this. Made from other manufacturers that sell for $800, $700, $800. I didn't test them. I did look at them online and I did read some reviews. I spent a little bit of time in my research. And I kept going back to the Pulsar. I believe in spending money on quality optics. I like Trigicon. I like Schmidt and Bender. And I even like Vor uh, Vortex. And yes, I know it's a Chinese-made scope. I've got three of them. They work well for what they're intended for. So I'm used to spending thousands of dollars on scopes. It doesn't bother me. I've got two VCOGs. And I probably have more in scopes than I do in guns. And you probably should think that way. Because after all, if you can't see what you're shooting at, particularly the older you get, you're, you're going to be putting yourself in a handicapped position. I will probably end up buying a small, compact set of night vision binoculars or even a monocular something in the three to four hundred dollar price range i haven't looked at the competitive options as to what pulsar makes but i will be looking at them first for doing my observations and my scouting and i probably could take this off the rifle and use it as just for scouting the problem that i see with that is that it's heavy it's about three pounds like I said so I want to find something a little bit lighter than I can hang around my neck and then keep this beside me and then do my nighttime scouting and then once I've identified my target bring this up to make that shot so I don't know if you need a digital nighttime scope high definition scope that would give you an advantage and an opportunity to take game at night in the event we are in a world without rule of law obviously right now that is a violation right and i'm not going to go out and use this at night now that's not what this was purchased for this was purchased for uh an event that may or may not ever happen but it's just like every other piece of insurance that we have I believe this would work on any AR platform. In fact, I think that's probably what most people put it on. Is a 5.56. I saw a couple of guys using this on a 5.56. And I believe one of them was even using it on a 6.5. Creedmoor. It's not waterproof. But it does have a nice uh, water resistant texture to it. So I will probably be looking for some kind of shower cap. Maybe camouflage the shower cap. Sort of a dust cover. I noticed on their website that they did not make one. But I will probably be looking to do something like that in the event that it is raining at night. And I need to be able to keep the controls dry. So... Zeroing it in is pretty intuitive. It has a one-shot zero uh, process to it. 
I've watched the videos on it. It looks pretty straightforward. I'm going to zero this thing in. Obviously, i got to wait till night. I can use this during the day. It does work during the day. It's a little... Um, uh, there's a little bit of a psychosis going on. It seems a little weird to look through a digital camera during the daytime. But it works. I can see very nice using this during the day. I was a little concerned that I would be hurting it by running it during the day. And I found out that that is not the case with this generation of night vision. I think that was more of your Gen 2 where you had to worry about uh, exposing the tubes to too much intensified light. That is not the case today. So you can't damage it using it during the daytime. I found that um, it it probably um, it's probably not going to be as comfortable for me to use during the daytime. I think it's a little slower. It's definitely heavier, and um, for what I'm going to be using it for, I, I feel like maybe for my squirrel hunting application, the regular 3x9 scope or rabbits, I will probably stick with the regular traditional optic. Four buttons on the top. You've got your zoom in, zoom out, your menu button, and then your record button. Your momentary switch right here to power it on. You hold it in for three seconds. And then over here underneath the IR illuminator, you have a button here. And that is also uh, a three-way switch as well for low, medium, and high setting. I found that night when I am using the IR illuminator that you have to be careful with branches that are in your peripheral because that light will splash on those branches and it'll wash out your image. Honestly, guys, I can tell you right now that I did not need to even use this. This does come off and there's a little dust cover that you can put over this. So on a well-lit night, I found that this thing picked up plenty of light and that would reduce a lot of weight as well. In my application, in a 22 long rifle, you figure 100, 150 yards is the most that I'm going to be using this. So I found that in that application, I had plenty of light. I will put a link in the description of this video where I purchased this scope. I'm not being endorsed by Optics Planet. They didn't send this to me to test. I bought this with my own money. And I am thankful that I have this opportunity to procure this advantage in our SHTF preparation. Never hurts to sharpen the axe. Iron sharpens iron, right? So this is where we're at, guys. In 2022, we are still prepping. We are still training. And we are still hoping that the eventual doesn't come, but... It's beginning to look a lot like chaos. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Till next time, be safe.